or welcome back to my channel. Today I've got another dental nursing video for you and this is tips and tricks of being a dental nurse. So these are anything that I find makes the job a little bit easier. They're not major things but they just kind of help either speed the process along or just make the little bits in your day that are a little bit annoying that much easier. Anyway, I've got a little post-it note here of all the things. I wrote all these down this morning while I was at work, while I thought of them. So if you want to hear about these, then just keep watching. Okay, so the first one I have mentioned in a video before, but I'm gonna kind of explain it a bit more. So this is when you pick up the spittoon filter at the end of the day, and you get a load of yucky, yuckiness hanging off of it, which is everybody's saliva throughout the day. It's not very nice, and there's no real way of lifting it out without it just being this huge stringy thing that just keeps on going. So a lot of the time you have to kind of flick it off. Oh, it's horrible. Anyway, to kind of combat that, my friend actually told me about this trick and I've been using it for the last, I think maybe three years. So this is to put the hot tap on and do about four or five cups of hot water, like boiling hot water, down the spittoon. So if you have a filling, then I always do this at the end of the filling. Obviously a checkup, you don't really need to do it because they generally don't spit for a checkup. But any filling, any crown preps, root canals, any treatment, I always do this. And the hot water helps to just break up the saliva so that when you take the filter out, it's clean. I mean, you still have to put it in bleach at the end of the day, but it won't have that horrible stringiness to it because the hot water will dissolve it and just break it all up. So the second one is one that I've always done. This is how I was taught to mix this specific material. However, I think I'm the only person at my practice that actually does it. A lot of the dentists say to me, why don't the other girls do that? Or, do the other girls know you can do that? I always thought it was something simple. I thought that was how you mix it because I've always mixed it like this. But if you don't know about it, then this is an easy way to mix. So with glass vionomer, and I'm talking about ones that you hand mix, not that you put in the amalgamator and mix. Um, so GI, poly F, actually that's probably it because that's the only two that you can really mix into a moldable one unless there's other ones. So any powder and water substance that doesn't need to be flowable, I will mix it up and I'll get it to the point where obviously it's moldable. I'll put it flat on the pad and then with the spatula I scrape it up, take it off the spatula and roll it into a little sausage in my fingers and then I'll put it on the pad and that just makes it a little bit easier for the dentist to take a flat plastic and scoop as much as they need off of it without it just being in a pile on the pad. Okay the next one is kind of I feel like you know that you should do it anyway but a lot of it gets forgotten most of the time but it's to pre-make things so I know that most of the time we don't really have time to do that but if you have a spare five minutes I always try and pre-make things just to make it a bit easier and by this I mean do it before it's needed so the main things I do is at the end of the day when we have to put the suction pipes it's basically a big bottle with tubes coming out of it and you need to put the suction tube on that and it sucks up all the stuff in the bottle to clean the pipes through. Obviously, if you already work in dentistry, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're just still training or you're not quite sure, then I'll try and put a picture in here of it, but you need to obviously fill this up at the end of the day and then it runs through the pipes. Anyway, I normally always do this way before the end of the day. So if I've got time, I'll just do it in the morning so that it's in the cupboard ready to go at the end of the day, or I'll do it if we finish a bit earlier before lunch, I'll do it then or I will do it maybe a few patients before the end of the day so that I'm not doing it at the end of the day. I mean it doesn't save like 20 minutes but it saves it saves like 30 seconds filling up and putting the pipes on but if it's already there to go you just open the cupboard get it out stick the pipes on done and then you can start cleaning down the other bits. The second thing that I like to pre-make is the alternate. So when we have impressions in so if we're doing a crown prep or if we're doing impressions for a denture a mouth guard anything which requires an alginate impression I always try and make up the impression first so I will get the alginate all out I'll put two scoops of alginate in the bowl and uh, the second bowl as well and then I'll put that back in the drawer with like a tissue over the top and I'll stack the bowls on top of each other as well with a tissue in between but it just saves again a little bit more time when the patient comes in so that you don't have to make it up there because generally the dentist will say okay you can have impressions now and you're like I'm still getting out now but I always try and make it up before before the patient comes in. And the third thing that I like to pre-make is some dentists like to use RCT files or K files with floss through them so that they can put their finger through the floss and then that way if they drop 
of the file is still attached to their finger. Not all dentists do this, but some do. So for those that do, I try and pre-floss the RCT files either at the beginning of the day if I have time. I don't always have time, but if I do, then I will try and do that with the dentist I'm working with if he uses that method. Or again, if we finish a little bit earlier before lunch, I'll do it then. Or any spare five minutes that I get in the day if a patient cancels and we can't fill the gap or if they don't turn up, I'll try and do little things like that just to help a bit. And flossing RCT files is a pain in the ass. And then I just kind of put it in a little sponge and I leave it in the pot so that when it comes to it, once you use the RCT files, new fresh floss ones are already there to go. So that's it for pre-making things. The next little tip that I'm gonna tell you about is people will be like, oh yeah, but why would you need to do that? But it is kind of helpful. And this is to put covers on suction tips if you're not using them so you know that they're fresh. So basically what I mean is if you have a filling coming up in the next few patients, sometimes I set up if I've got some time. So if we have an exam in, I will, you know, on the side kind of set up the filling and then put a big bib over it so I'm not having to set it up just before we get the patient in. Again, it just kind of speeds up time a little bit. And I'll put a suction tip on the suction tube and I'll come to it and think, have I used that or not? And I know you should remember if you've used it, but you generally forget. So I always, if I put a suction tip on there and I'm not using it straight away, I put a cover over it. So a, just a disposable cover, like the ones that go on the light cure or ones that go over the three in one tip. I just put one of those over the suction tube so that when I come to use the suction, I know that it's clean because it's got a cover on it. I know that seems really like, why would you need to do that though? But if you put a suction tip on the tube and you know you're not using it straight away, put a cover over it so that you know that it's fresh when you come to use it. So I've only got three more little tips for you and this next one is again kind of, oh well a lot of people already do that but I only recently started doing this and it definitely does make it a little bit easier. So if you are mixing poly F, which is really hard to get off of a spatula, I normally fill the sink up with just a shallow bit of water if we use poly F so that once I've used a spatula it will go straight into the sink and it doesn't matter then how long I leave it for because it will still be soaking so it doesn't have time to dry because it's constantly in water so it's wet especially if you're running behind it's just easier to put the instruments in the sink and you'll put them in the dirty tray when you have time because I always like to scrub mine off a little bit to make it easier for the decon nurse so I do a little bit of shallow water put the instruments in there to soak especially if they've got GI or poly F on and then it's much easier to scrape that off before it goes into the Secon so that it doesn't have time to set on there. So the next one is to do with masks. Now I personally don't wear a mask and I know before some of you go, oh that's disgusting. I wear a full face visor. So it's like a piece of plastic. It looks like a biker's helmet really but without the head bit. So it's like glasses but the glasses have got a piece of plastic here. So your whole face is covered. If anything flicks up it's just going to hit the plastic. It's not going to actually go on your face. The reason I use this and not masks is because the masks that we have irritate my skin. Masks have always irritated my skin, I don't know what it is about them, but because I think they're so rough, they bring me up in spots all along here, and it's mainly always in this area here. Even if I just have it on for a couple of minutes, it just really irritates my skin. Anyway, on to the tip. So if I've got a cold, I will wear a mask because you don't want to be like a little bit snotty or you don't want to have to keep sniffling it's just not very nice when you've got cold but to make it a little bit easier I put a few drops of Olbersol in the mask and then I put it on so that I'm always breathing Olbersol in which obviously helps clear the sinuses and it's just good for a cold in general. Olbersol is really good to kind of combat that just one to two drops don't put any more than that in trust me because your eyes will just water all the time and then just put it over obviously your mouth and nose and then you can just breathe it in. It's also really good if you've got a smelly patient just put a little bit of that in or perfume or something in the mask just to cover the smell. If you have a cold, Olbersoil in a mask is the best thing because you're constantly inhaling it. And also, other people can't really smell it that much, especially if you just put one to two drops on. Now I'm on to my last tip that I'm gonna share with you guys, and this is to always have a spare glove in your pocket. Now I know you might think, well, why do you need a spare glove in your pocket? And this is just one example of why. So if you leave the surgery and a patient says like, oh, can you look at my denture or something? And they go to give it to you, you can't take it from them because you haven't got gloves. So there's one spare in your pocket just to have straight on hand. 
Or another example would be, so yesterday was a perfect example of this. It was the end of the day and the hygienist comes out of her room. She says, oh, are you going downstairs? I said, yeah. She said, oh, I didn't give these instruments to the decon nurse. And I didn't have any gloves on because I was dressed in my normal clothes. It was the end of the day and she was just running late. And I was like, I need to go and get a glove. Hang on a minute. But obviously if you've got a spare one in your pocket, I know at this time I was just dressed in my normal clothes, but an example would be if somebody needs to give you a dirty instrument, you've got something in your pocket just to pull out and put on. Same applies with like x-rays, so I don't know if this is universal in practices, but certainly in my practice, if we take x-rays, we're not allowed to have gloves on outside of the surgery, so we have them in our pocket and then we have sprayed tissue, like a lot of it because you don't want to go anywhere kind of near that. Then once the dentist is finished with the x-ray, he puts it in the tissue so that you're just carrying this huge lump of tissue with a tiny thin x-ray in it. And then once we get to the x-ray room, you just take the gloves out of your pocket, put them on, and then you can do what you need to do. But if, say, you forget to have the gloves in your pocket when you take an x-ray and you've got a spare glove in there anyway from the beginning of the day, at least that's one that you've already got so you don't have to worry about it. That's just a kind of a couple examples of why you might need a spare glove in your pocket, but it's just good to have in general if you ever need it. So those are all the tips and tricks for you that I have. If I think of any more, I might do another video on it. Again, if you want me to do any specific videos, just pop them in a comment down below. I always read the comments, I always reply. All of your suggestions are so helpful. I'm gonna be doing a day in the life video soon. I'm not sure when, kind of figuring out how to do that and I'll upload one at some point soon. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I hope some of these tips and tricks were helpful for you. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Yeah. <laughs>